Welcome back to Crafted Entrepreneur. Okay, I am so pumped for this episode today because I'm bringing you a special, special person. He fixes me up. Okay, he's my fixer. I am joined today by Dr. Nick Deliberato. He is a functional medicine practitioner, and this is a big, big one. He's a tactical nervous system specialist, okay? I love that, uh, but basically he's like a chiropractor, but way better than any chiropractor you've ever met in your life, okay? So he has a very diverse background, and I love, like the first time I came to him, he was like, I'm not like one of those chiropractors that's like a money grabber. Like I, if I'm doing my job, you shouldn't see me all the time. That Cause I was like, yeah, he really wants to like heal what's happening at the root of why I'm having my back pain, why I'm having my jaw issues that I'm having. So he's really committed to helping people get better. And he's seen my husband Chase, and I think I've sent like a ton of friends. I've even brought a client to him. So I'm really excited because as entrepreneurs, we struggle with so much stress all the time and we actually end up being really um, hard on our bodies. We put ourselves last usually on the list because we're trying to take care of everybody else around us. I know that's at least what happens for me. And so this episode is really tailored to you that if you want to start putting yourself first so you can last longer and give your very best to people. So welcome Dr. Nick to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, so let's talk about how did you become, uh, I mean, I've never heard the tactical nervous system specialist, but how did you become this person? You know, that's more of a play. I just, I think we should be impeccable with our word and I enjoy, oh, I like that. enjoy writing and used to write some poetry. So um, just trying to make it a little more exciting. Um, but I used to want to go into cardiac surgery when I was younger mm-hmm. and that was kind of my goal for a long time. And at a certain point, I realized that <clears throat> the conventional medicine was kind of at odds with the philosophy of what I thought healthcare was. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up taking a more circuitous route back to healthcare. I did some project management, investment banking, moved out to California um, to get my chiropractor's license. I have three boys at home, um, been married for a little over 10 years. And what really spoke to me with chiropractic was the ability to have a private practice so that I could set aside enough time to sit Mm -hmm. with patients so that it wasn't, I wasn't operating from somebody else's box, right? And then also being able to diagnose and run lab work and really, really heal because early on I thought, you know, if if people um, went into medicine for for their love of science, and stayed in it for their love of healing, we would have a totally different system. Yeah. And, and I've joked with you about it before. I used to call it the, the disease sustaining enterprise Yeah. because nobody really gets better. Um, there's a lot of apathy there. And then I changed that to the covert disease subscription model because we're like, well, my healthcare paid for it. Well, but are you healthier this year than you are last year? Right. And there's just so many things we can do from reducing stress to, um, diet and nutrition and lifestyle that help us turn back our biological clocks mm-hmm. and just live, you know, happy, healthy life. So oh that was really kind of the, in a nutshell, like it was seeking that out that, that put me in this position. Today. Yeah. You tried all these other things and like, it didn't bring you happiness and fulfillment no. like healing people did. No, definitely. The, you know, biology systems, biology is so fascinating. And I think if we were to live 10, 20 lifetimes, there'd still be more to learn. Mm-hmm. It's, it's always changing. It's just not learn something and then kind of put it on repeat, right? Because there's always growth to be had. He uses a lot of big words, you guys, <laughs> too, and he's very deep. So just, just stay tuned. Okay. So, you know, as entrepreneurs, we feel so much stress. And I know every time I come into you, I'm like, oh gosh, like I feel like he's going to ask me how busy I've been and I'm going to give an F on my report card because <laughs> I'm like, ah. There's like, the awareness. <laughs> yes, I, I have awareness. <laughs> But, you know, it's like, I think all of us want to be less busy, but then there's like, you know, for me, it's the kids have a million and one things. Mm -hmm. Then I have a business, my husband who's running a business and then trying to have a social life. Like there's so many things to try to fit on the calendar. We, we talk about this all the time. We weren't made to be this busy. And so that's why all of us are like, just our bodies are feeling the effects of being so busy. Absolutely. 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 So how do we combat that? <clears throat> well, first you have to really, I mean, you're, you've gotten pretty clear on what your core missions are and what those objectives are, you know? Um, so that once you get clarity, clarity brings, clarity enhances the connection, right? And then you could start 
eating in a way that supports that. Mm. You can start, you know, it, it doesn't have to be all of these like huge changes all the time. You start little by little, just making small changes and, and, and really um, not paying lip, lip service to your health because it's one of those things that just starts to, to get away from us. And um, the biological purpose of apathy is to summon aid. And, and part of that feeling is this that nobody's going to come for help, right? Ooh, okay. so, so because our bodies are so resilient, I mean, we will run them ragged and mm -hmm. they will keep responding and keep responding and keep showing up. So I think you have to find people in your life that are, are nourishing their bodies, that, are, that aren't just, um, that are growing in a way with their relationships, with their families, with their spirituality, that is scaling proportionately. Because if you do that, then you have this strong foundation, right? Because it's we all hear the stories of people that have just physician burnout, entrepreneurial burnout. Oh, I grew this company from five million to a billion dollars, but but it left me divorced with right. a with an autoimmune issue, with an inability with food sensitivities. I mean, it, it's yeah. it's not until it's taken away from you do you really start to 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 say, wow, I could have done this differently. Yep. So it takes that that foresight. Absolutely, it does. Okay, so I like what you said about you could start just by eating healthier. Mm -hmm. And like for me, I know that I need to just eat a lot of protein all the time. Like in order to keep up with the amount of stuff that I'm doing, I need to eat a lot of protein. Do you have a target? I try to do 135 it's pretty good. grams of protein a yeah. day. And uh, one of my other doctors, like I've told you about my other, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. hormone doctor that I go to, she was like, stop eating chicken because but I want to know what you think about chicken because she was like chicken chickens are like um so stressed out all the time and the body keeps the score even in the chickens sure and so then you're eating all these stressed out chickens and you wonder why you're like so stressed out all the time Gala. well there, there's probably some nuance to it <laughs> <laughs> chickens chickens have they do have arachidonic acid it's a, it's an it's, a, it's one of the inflammatory acids oh, right one of the ooh. ones that, that make you inflamed our, our hunter gatherer ancestors had a certain ratio. It was like four to one. There's more omega six in chickens than there are per se in red meat or in processed foods and really high omega sixes. Okay. So I think if if you're getting adequate protein through chicken thighs, chicken breast, and you're doing some good plant based items. Oh, I want to know what's good plant based. Then then that's that's another, especially for women, because women. Um, you know, and you're you're coming on that uh, coming of that age where you start to start thinking about menopause. You start thinking about I, well, I heart mean, attacks. Well, I like very menopause. Yeah, and that's and that's it's where, insane because I'm only 36. For for sure. So, and that's a sign of of terrain issues, right? I like to use this this little story of they used to be like we have 54 trillion cells or, or however many in the body at any time. Okay. And they're like, where's the brain? Imagine if you had to manage 54 trillion people, how would that play out? It would it would insane. be it would be crazy. It would yeah. be chaos. So they took cells and they, and they removed the nucleus, which is where the DNA is. Mm -hmm. And the cells lived for four months. So they're like, well, if you remove an organism's brain, the cell dies. So that's not the brain. Then they had to figure out why did the cell die? Well, there's proteins in there that end up degrading and they need to like rebuild. Okay. But if you don't have the DNA, you can't rebuild. So they know why it dies. Proteins inside the cell die. They know that the nucleus isn't the brain. And what they came to is that the cell wall is actually the cell brain. Oh. So what's interfacing with the cell wall? Well, number one is your blood. So what's in the blood? Macronutrients, hormones, peptides, um, phthalates from bad makeups, cosmetics. You know, all those things are interacting and, and really driving the cell's functionality. So micro and macro environments are so critical. They've, they've, stimula they've simulated fights between significant others, and some of them have in, increased inflammatory chemicals for 72 hours afterwards. Oh my gosh. So your thoughts and kind of the context of your life has an effect down to the cellular level. So coming, is, back, that's coming back to the environment, it's really, it's really about. nuts. But yeah. it's also, it makes you want to be better right. at, at how you, at what you put in, put in those environments. Mm hmm well, just like what you talked about, like that your foundation includes, you got to hang out with people who are also health conscious, like who actually care about taking care of their bodies. If you're hanging out with five hustlers who just, you know, stay up late to work, get up early to work and just run ragged, that's what you're going to do too. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to, you're going to fall. You're going to kind of just sink into that 
into that energy. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, I think I'd rather you have, and if you're eating organic chicken, right? I think always I get organic free range chicken. It's going to be free of, of those, uh, uh, hormones. It's going to be free of antibiotics. Um, you know, you, it's already hard enough to eat well. Right. But there was a, a recent study where, and this is really interesting because it's very basic. They took, uh, I don't know how many people were in the study, but they did 150 minutes. So that's 30 minutes, five days a week of rigorous exercise, moderate to rigorous. So it's not like you're doing 75 hard, you know, killing okay. yourself. Not everybody can do that. They had them on a, on a probiotic, um, uh, lactobacillus plantarum, a greens powder, 20 minutes of, of, predetermined meditation work and a Mediterranean diet high in leafy greens, animal products with some organs, whether they be desiccated like beef liver and things like that. You can get them capsulized and desiccated. So you I know I have them. So you don't have to taste them, right? Okay. They turned back their biological clocks in two months, five years. Wow. Five years. So if you're somebody who's at 36 saying, I'm starting to feel some of these hormone shifts, menopause, yeah. it's because there's inflammation. It's because... The body doesn't make mistakes. We exceed its capacity yeah. to adapt, and we're organisms. So we have to we have to like keep that in mind when we're when we're when we're you know doing our grocery shopping lists and and meal prepping, um, and it's it's as important as the other you know daily to do list, which as you know it's what the family and businesses, private practice. It's it's endless. Right. I struggle with that all the time, trying to find dedicated time to get everything done. Right. That's a, that's aligned with the kind of the greater vision. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's like the dilemma right now mm-hmm. in all of our lives. Mm-hmm. But I love how you shared that study because I feel like we kind of will hear one thing like me. I heard the doctor say no chicken. And so then every time I eat a chicken, I'm like, oh, my gosh, like I'm trying to get this protein. Like, yeah, but chicken's bad for me. But what else <laughs> do I eat? Red meat. You know, like there's all these rules. The misinformation becomes very yes. pervasive and there's so many there's so many talking heads. Yes, exactly. Which is why I find it really critical to like this is why we like choose a partner and grow a life with them, right? Mm-hmm. Because there's stability in that. There's growth in that. Oh. It, we're not like, well, I'll just be with her one day and her another day like it's the same with with um with your overall health and healing. Find people who you just gel with, whose philosophy makes sense, who's a good person, and 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 do do six month, eight month, ten month programs with them. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm evolving my business too, because it, sometimes it's so transactional and everybody's so busy, we just scratch the surface. Yeah, and if we were just, you know, I don't like connecting on like a very egoic basis. You know, hi, I, I went to somebody school and. I'm Nick Deliberato and you're her and I'm a dad and this and that. Okay, great. You just named a bunch of roles. Right. But like really finding out where that person's hurting, where they need to heal, all that stuff. That's, you know, I'm, I'm 40 now and it just seems like a no brainer that that those are the conversations we should be having. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so good. I'm excited for people. Can people work with you online? Yeah, there's going to be some virtual programs right now. It's it's a lot of like um, southern South Orange County. Yeah. Um, but it's it's going to it's going to grow, I think, from there because I'm, I'm bringing on some um, other resources like nurse practitioners and mm-hmm. certified health coaches um, to create that ecosystem that really that really supports that sort of work. Well, and that's what I'm finding is like, you know, I was in my first part of my entrepreneur career was all around selling supplements. Mm hmm. I don't know if you know that, but it's no. like selling I mean, protein I, shakes I, no, and vitamins no. and, you know, like that was my world. And now I feel like we're kind of getting away from that where people want personalized approaches to mm-hmm. their health. It's not like one shake fits all, sure. you know, in the calorie deficit. Like we don't want that anymore. We actually are craving what is right for my body with all of my unique experiences and my unique lifestyle that I live, you know? So I love what you're doing. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's very like on, you got to look at the individual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it it's hard because you have to, you have to get really clear as to like where you're going and, and what you want to do. you got to create that, like everybody has their little hero's journey, right? You can kind of go back to like where it all started yeah. and, and, and try and really, um, find your purpose but i just i just see the byproduct of of health apathy i see the byproduct of, of people thinking everything is fine or, or that as you age it's just that's just kind of 
what you that's just the, that's what you're going to get right you're going to get older and sicker oh, and you're gonna, i don't want that and, oh. and it really doesn't have to happen because i have patients that that don't fall into that yeah um because they're more they're more conscious about well, you, and you life. have to think about it now right Absolutely like you can't right wait now. till you're 70 and go oh wait i want to I want to live longer. I want to live healthier. It's like, you got to be thinking about it in your 20s and 30s. I wish that the system, when you turned 18, it was mm -hmm. like, we're going to run this self-decode genetic scan so you can see, oh, I'm MTHFR. Oh, I have this Dow enzyme. I do have that, yeah. You know, when you can look at some of these, these like uh, um, genetic expression or what, what the susceptibilities or proclivities you might have, and then start running real lab work. Not this, like, go through the motions labs that that most you know i call it the sickness circus now like Ooh, it's just it's good. it's too much yeah like if i if i cut my finger please take me to the to the er and give me the best vascular surgeon and give me antibiotics but when it comes to chronic disease and when it comes to prevention and optimization it doesn't exist mm -hmm. our insurance our insurance doesn't cover it right so as i was mentioning to you before like i want to participate meaningfully in a way that helps move this current health care paradigm away from a business model because mm -hmm. that's what it is it's not mm -hmm. about health and healing anymore it's a it's a business model i think i just saw something today where some guy i don't know if he was in the east coast made 17 million dollars putting like misdiagnosing people with cancer over, oh my gosh over it's a netflix special right now over 55 or something like yeah, that i didn't even get to netflix. see it i was yeah. reading the headline but like it's it is it's everywhere so we have nobody is going to take care of of kayla you'll find people that are willing to facilitate it Mm -hmm. But it's it's up to the individual um, to de to decide what yeah. you know and 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 if there's enough incentive and emotion around making the making those smart choices. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so entrepreneurs are listening in right now, and I think if they're in their beginning stages and they're kind of like they'll think about it later, kind of mode. Like sure. I'll think about my health later. What would you tell them? That's a really good question. Um, I probably had like a nice quip for it, but now that you have me on the spot, um, I would, I would just say that there's a lot of like, you know, we always say we trade, uh, health for wealth. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the most basic cliche that's lasted for a long time. But if you get really clear on your purpose, like what is your purpose as, as an entrepreneur, as a, you know, as an individual, and you map out kind of, you know, your spirituality, your financial and your business, your emotional, physical, it's kind of the five point star sort mm -hmm. of idea. You'll see that without your health, if you just put it to the wayside, very rarely can you reverse it. Mm -hmm. And and it brings on all, it creates a, a, a domino effect, right? Because when, you, when you're not well, I have patients come in, my mom was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, she's 52. Um, uh, this person had an injury and, and their, their back is so injured they can't do anything that they love to do anymore. It, you can build so much resilience. If you wouldn't do, if you would, if, you, if you're building an entrepreneurial business mm -hmm. in the right way with a strong foundation and it's kind of bulletproofed and there's lots of resilience and you have the right people working for you, think of your health the same way. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it'll only make your business stronger. Right. It'll only give you more self-confidence. It'll only give you more energy to to push a little bit harder yeah. in those in those business endeavors. Well, and I like to think about it because I'm like so competitive and I like to gamify things. Okay. But how many people can you think of that are like legit, you know, those people out there that are actually wealthy, the gurus online that like have a banging body? Like there's really not a lot. Because something's got to get like it, that's their mentality is yeah, something's got to give. Right. And so I've had this kind of mission in this last year. I'm like, no, like I'm only going to get hotter as I, <laughs> age. you know, like sure. that's that's kind of like and I have to gamify it in that way, because if you just for me, I don't know why that motivates me. It's probably trauma. Like, well, well, maybe a, I mean, it's a <laughs> it's a gift to yourself. We have we have, we have people running programs that are um, are based on conditional not mm -hmm. unconditional conditional love yeah dependent on unrealistic standards of beauty that's true right yes but you can sit down with you before. and be and, and have a lot of self-love mm -hmm. and be like i'm gonna game if i'm gonna i'm gonna get smoking this age stuff whatever it's a number i'm gonna take care of my body and that's a, that the means matter so okay. just the thought process of you coming from from that sort of place and also acknowledging like we all have have issues and things that that drive us the subconscious mind runs a lot of our right. what's going on but but 
you can do any, all sorts of programs to help you tap into subconscious reprogramming. Yeah. That's, you know, and it's repetition and emotional connection. Those are the things that like rewire and help plas plasticity come back so that we're not just, you know, coming from a place, well, I chose a career that my mom and dad don't like, I'll show them. Yeah. Like that, that, sort, that sort of yeah. mentality. It's not, it's not healthy long term. No, but. no. Okay, so I want to talk about trauma though. Okay. Because I read this book years ago called The Body Keeps Score. Sure. And I know that like I see so many of my own coaching clients like their traumas really dictate how they run their business interesting it, it's crazy like why they make some decisions of hiring and firing it's nuts um I mean it's not nuts it's science of like why it happens but mm -hmm. reading have you ever read that book yeah okay oh, yeah. so how can we as entrepreneurs like heal that stuff to help us like have a healthier body because like my cousin was diagnosed with you were going to see her did they tell you she got diagnosed with leukemia? I, yeah. Well, I know she the cancer came back, right? Yeah. Or, okay. Well, yeah. She had breast cancer. Okay. And then now she has leukemia. Like, okay. Like, it's horrible. When she first got diagnosed with the breast cancer, though, she went to a clinic in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And they said, breast is nest. So if you didn't feel safe for most of your life, mm -hmm. which that was her story, and she talks about it publicly, but, like, a lot of those people end up getting breast cancer. Sure. So... And as soon as she told me that, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I want to just express everything. I want to get it out of me. Like, I don't want to be mad about things, yeah. you know, because it's like not worth it. So talk to me about the science behind that. And what do we do to like actually get these things out of our body so we don't experience pain like some people do if they just carry their trauma forever? Yeah, d definitely. I think there are different, there, 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 we're seeing more and more different sorts of treatments where, you know, people do M EMDR, they do somatic mm -hmm. therapies. Um, the brain is very powerful, so I think you have to approach it holistically from a nutrition, from a mental wellness standpoint, if that means therapy, okay. if that means plant medicinals, if that means going to the ketamine clinic, and if that means IFS or like interfamily systems, you know, because there is always, we dissolve those sorts of traumas. We don't, we don't ever fully heal for them. We just, we move on from them. We become more resilient to them. And there's this, like in IFS, they talk about um, trigger uh, pattern wound unmet need okay so if you can create enough space to really delve deep enough and w whether it's working with somebody some people have epiphanies on their own through just doing breath work mm -hmm. um but uh, but you know it's it's like the metaphor of of if you suppress those things because you don't feel safe it's like you put the kids i mean i'm from ohio so we had basements there you put the kids in the basement and eventually like they're going to act up and they're going to want to show up and it's going to be through your projections. So I just think if you can start to catch yourself, um, and for me personally, uh, meditation and breath work, like fit mind, calm, these very specific um, applications where you dedicate time to rejuvenate and to, and to kind of it's it's metacognition it's the ability to be like oh my god i'm not my thoughts yeah and then you're watching separate them yeah from separate that. yourself from that and you're watching them and you're saying wow that that that's why i that's why i did this mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and then you and then the more you build awareness around that the less it hijacks your physiological cascade right because when you get stressed it's a whole there's cortisol released you get constriction of your blood vessels mm -hmm. um there is usually some adrenaline that that comes out so you have to recover from that and and we have in our body will, will allow you to do that it's called allostasis it'll let you adapt to a stressor but only for a certain period of time yeah. the mental stressor is no different so mm -hmm. if you can if you can like get really honest with yourself and and do that sort of personal development or at least prioritize it, mm -hmm. especially if no one, some people have big T trauma, some people have little T trauma, but little T trauma still shows up in our, in our, in Explain our lives. Explain to people what, what is that? Big, big T trauma. I mean, and it could be physical, verbal, uh, big T trauma could be a molestation by a, by a family mm -hmm. member. Um, little T trauma can be, uh, just not ever feeling like maybe you're the, the, the third child and you just felt like you never got that attention yeah okay you know it it, it shifts but um those are those are equally important to 
because they, they create mental prisons for us mm -hmm. and they live inside of us and they do those sorts yeah. of things. There was just a study where they took 41 women and they scanned them to see if they had any sort of active cancers mm -hmm. and they didn't find any active cancers. So you can look at DNA and, and methylation shedding yes. and see if breast cancer genes are turned on or off. This is Dr. Dr. Burke, I believe. And all the women that they tested had can breast cancer genes specifically turned on. So they said, get rid of your lotions, your, your, all your, the endocrine disruptors, your, all, all your lotions, your, 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 your makeup, and then she, and your, your mouthwash, your toothpaste, anything that has junk in it. And you can use products from this pre-approved list. And they retested and the predominant, I don't know if it was 90%, 98%, the breast cancer genes turned off. That was wow. the only. That was the only um, intervention they, they did. There was no diet changing. There was no meditate. Like so, we wow. we're really in charge of. You know, it comes back to that that those micro and macro environments. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if if you don't know that um, that it's important to process those things and and allocate some time to it, it's it's gonna you're gonna stay stuck. Why, okay, talk to me about the science, because I really don't understand this. How does this actually physically help us when we meditate? Like, why does that help the cell walls? Like, I think it's, a, I think it's a, it's a constellation of things that are happening, okay. you know, because we like to be a reductionist, like, I do X, Y, Z, this happens, right? right? So I think what we're really seeing is we're, we're, we're shifting into a state of parasympathetic dominance. There's something called polyvagal theory and, and people, entrepreneurs, people who are, who are um, alpha, you know, alpha and, and just kind of doers tend to be in sympathetic overdrive. They're just all yeah. the time, you know, it's like next thing, next thing, next thing. And when you shift into a parasympathetic state, that is a state that's a different brainwave state. So you're so so the, so the the brain is reacting differently. You're releasing different neurochemistry, which changes the architecture of your brain. Wow. If it's if it's consistent, right? Yeah. Um, you're no longer your your adrenals are, aren't are producing as much cortisol and epinephrine. These are things that when we you're you're using less energy to break down to inflame, and and we have a, a finite amount of energy that we can use. We're browning on the inside, like that's just the that we're burning. We make energy. We brown on the inside. We breathe out carbon dioxide. Okay. So when you meditate, it is it is changing you on the structural level, and it's also um, getting into your consciousness and making you a, a better decision maker. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. it's it's it may be even if it's microseconds pulling you out of this subconscious um, patterning yeah. that you may not even know. Peter Crone, this guy, the mind I architect. I love Peter Crone. Yeah, he's great. He's always like, I, I don't, I um, I don't solve problems. I dissolve problems. Or like, we have most people really struggle with subconscious constraints, mm. and and we're not. We're thinking about how do I help this person? How do I? structure this deal how do i order these labs you know we're not thinking about man how how do i tick yeah we very rarely go that deep under the hood but when you do it and you do it consistently you you start showing up differently and people describe it as almost um like kind of spiritual yeah because it's just big shifts yeah i feel like um i can tell a difference in my life when i'm meditating because mm -hmm. Like people, my, my closest friends will be like, you feel like I can feel peaceful around you. And they know when I'm off my game, because right. they'll be like, you're like just being around you, I feel stressed. And I'm like, oh gosh, like I need to go meditate. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I give off that energy of like, oh my God. So I'm in one of those states right now. But yeah, I mean, that, that's how, that's kind of how the science goes. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I, there's probably, you can probably go deeper into the neuroscience, but okay. um, I think those are the, like the biggest takeaways. It's enough to at least incentivize people to like, to, to try it and spend some time doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, even if it's just on your drive to work or on your drive home from work or. I got a machine called BrainTap. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's going to link in the show notes, you guys, my affiliate link. But I love that because I really struggled with meditating before. And sure. so this thing uses auricular therapy mm -hmm. and the guy's voice or whatever. And it helps me like immediately pull you able. into it. Yeah. yeah. It's like a frequency that now they have these whistles that are 528 hertz that are supposed to help calm you. I think it has stuff like stuff that. Like yeah. That. It There's has all these weird little, sounds in it. Yeah. The, you know, you got to see what works best for you. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so for some people, like those gadgets, it, it, they're just catalysts to getting there faster. Mm -hmm. But again, we don't want to bypass. Like for me, the journey, like the process is what's important, right? If we get so consumed by the outcome, whether it's a spinal adjustment or blood work, um, and we lose track of, of, of the process, we're missing out on like all the meat. Mm, that's good. We're happiest in the process. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're 
congruent and aligned with whatever it is you're doing, I mean, it's really not work. It's it feels good. You mm-hmm. you you have you probably need to like force yourself to shut it down because the energy there is to keep doing is, yeah, is there to keep doing so it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned something that I think is really important to point out to every entrepreneur listening in, because these endocrine disruptors are slowly killing a lot of people. And it's something so simple that people could just, you switch out your cleaning supplies at your house, Mm -hmm. you know, like get everything non-toxic in there, Uh, laundry detergent, like all of that stuff should be completely not toxic. And for some reason, like I'll talk to people and they're like, um, I just can't give up my Tide, that smell. And I'm like, it's like you're putting chemicals on your kids' bodies. Like I'm trying not to judge them, but I'm like judging them. You know, because it's so bad. For, like, how? what would you say to that person that's really, like, struggling with that stuff? Like, they think it doesn't matter. And I'm like, oh, like, yeah, it so matters. It, it's it's just, it's another, again, because there's always a deeper level, right? Yes, it makes so yeah. deep. No, it's it's the clinging and attaching. Why are you why are you so stuck on that nostalgic smell, right? Like, what what do you, Ooh, what do we yeah. need to, like, no, if, you t- if you tell somebody they're stale or, like, oh, you're so set in your ways, that's not a compliment. <laughs> Yo, you have a fixed mindset. It, it's... You, 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 why don't you just try getting rid of it and, and move to this product? Because it's in the long run, there are people like when you run self to code and things like that, you'll find out some people detox really well, whether that's mold, mycotoxins, phthalates, herbicides, glyphosate from our food. Some people just take it, make it water soluble, fat soluble and get rid of it. Yeah. And other people just bioaccumulate it. Are the people and women are more likely to bioaccumulate because you have a you have an infertile rhythm, you have a menstrual cycle, your Mm -hmm. liver has other things to do. The liver is filtering like it would be like you drinking eight ounces of water every second. Yeah, that's how quick and it's doing other work too. So I I would just tell them like give it give it like don't be so stuck in your ways that you're not willing to try something different if it's if it's good for your health yeah and if you're not willing to then you got to start asking like why what do you have against yourself Ooh, that's like a self-hate thing a little bit i mean maybe maybe it's just total apathy and it's just lack of awareness and lack of consciousness but i think some people just they like they they don't think they're worth making those changes Mm -hmm. it's like becomes a becomes a worthy thing maybe i maybe why should i do that like i'm not gonna spend more money or i already have a million things to worry about um, and it just becomes conditioning. Mm-hmm. When my mom would come to stay with us before she switched out her detergent, she would lay in this blanket on our on our couch. And I swear to God, if I didn't wash that blanket, <laughs> even after I washed it, it still smelled like whatever detergent that was two weeks later. <laughs> and and we're so like clean in the house that I was just like my wife and I were just like, this is this is a strong it bothers it's you, a strong yeah. smell. Yeah, it's a really strong smell. And. Um, and, and I, you got to wonder too, like all of this, all of this, uh, this uptick in allergies. Women mm-hmm. in their 30s are seeing explosive percentages of can- of growth in cancers. Yeah, it, it's 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 one of those things. If you have if you have cardiovascular health in the family at 40 years old, you should be getting a, a carotid artery ultrasound to make sure you don't have plaque and calcium. You should do a heart scan, just so you don't become a statistic. Okay. Right, because it's it, it's there's so much that we could be doing, and we've been told like wait till you're sick and then go get a pill right and that really is just a horrible way to um to take care of this this ama- this like marvelous contraption apparatus that we live in okay i'm interested to see your answer to this question because i will give advice about how to take care of your health mm-hmm. and everybody loves it usually but i sometimes get these people that'll be like that's easy for you to say okay. you're a millionaire you can afford it mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and they're very much in that victim like mindset instead of being resourceful what would you say to that person because it is true like you know insurances don't pay for yeah. this preventative stuff that yeah. we're doing yeah you know i would say there's a version for everybody and, okay. it, and it might be incremental and it might be progressive because if you really want to see that like if you want something you have to decide that you're going to chase it before you can chase it. Ooh, that's good. You know what I mean? You're just not, if you say, I'll do it when I get there, and I've been, I've been taught that hard lesson recently. If you say you're gonna just wait for things to align, you're gonna, and when, the, when the money comes in or when you're ready, you will, the decision will fizzle and fade before you ever get there. Mm-hmm. So take out a credit card that's an 18 month, um, you know, 0% APR and pay $100 a month and invest $500 in, in better meal prepping. Yeah. Like there are so many things that you can do. It's just, it, there's a lot. My learning. heart hurt when you said to open up the credit card. There, there's a learning curve. You guys have to have the discipline to pay it off. For for sure. But it's, <laughs> if, it, it's one of those things. 
so many people, if you ask them, like, are you happy? Yeah, most people. Are you ha- they're going to be like, uh, I wish I was a little, had more muscle, was prettier. Wish I had, was back to my healthy weight. Wish I had more yeah. financial stability. Mm-hmm. Why isn't that happening? Yeah. You have to adopt the actions and behaviors mm-hmm. that allow you to obtain that. And it's not going to happen in the reverse. You're not just going to fall into it. And, and I don't know how you feel, but like this idea, I grew up Midwest men- mentality. You can work yourself into anything. Not true. You, you can work pretty hard and it will get you far. But there's, if you're not, from a mental standpoint, taking quantum leaps like that are scary and make you feel uneasy. Yeah, you've got to take risks. Yeah. It's just you're going to stay where you're, you're going to stay the mm-hmm. same. And that mm-hmm. goes for, for, your, for your health and for changing the way you eat and the products you buy. You don't have to do it overnight. It can be a little little month by month, year by year, but it will it will add up. Yeah. Well, it's like some people don't even like you can make your own laundry detergent. You can make your own deodorant. Like you can make a lot of these things and then sell it. Like that's where my mind goes. I'm like, be resourceful. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, I know my brain is crazy. So uh, anyway, but if you have that, if that's part of your package, then you should you should pursue it. You know, yeah. a little I mean, I'm always you know, uh, what's the whole mother of invention? Like necessity is the mother of invention. I mean, yeah. that's a great, that's a great skill to have. Yeah. It's just like learning to be resourceful. Like you said, like when you make a decision and then you take action and have beliefs based on that decision, mm-hmm. you know, you start to move differently and you become resourceful. So, but I think a lot of people don't realize how resourceful they are as human beings. Yeah. There's you know? a lot of self-limiting beliefs and yes. that goes back to like kind of breaking some of that down. Like you yep. deserve this. You like, tell me, you got to ask people like, what, what are you trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you don't have a vision of where you want to go, if it's all just like, if it's not a committed decision, we all make decisions that we never see through. Right. So you got, it's got to be that committed decision that has like a carrot and has a little bit of an anchor and has Mm -hmm. some support to it. Mm -hmm. It, I mean, not everybody can just go solo and do it. You need a team of people. Well, and yeah, if you hang out with people who are committed to health, committed to wealth, committed to all the things that maybe I know that the listeners have that are watching this right now, right? Like it's, you collaborate on getting where you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the whole rising tide lifts all, all ships. It it really does. It, 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 um, and you feel it too. It's not just like an intellectual when you're around people that are taking care of themselves and, and, you know, leaning into discomfort. Cause that's really what it is. Taking, taking ownership of your health is, is getting like, cause I, I just live and breathe it. Right. So for me, it's not that uncomfortable. I got to get uncomfortable in other areas, Yeah. but most people need to get very uncomfortable and to face their fear. We have fears of getting old and we have fears of dying and fears of not being healthy. Um, it's funny. I had a patient that you know, I was like, you need to work out. It's like the only way you're going to like fix this issue is like, you just, you need more muscle like to support your body. She was like, eh, I don't like to work out. I don't like to sweat like all this. Then I see some working out happening. I'm like, what happened? And she responded. She goes, "Well, the fiance, fiance, and I called it off. So now, now I need to get the oh. now I need to get the revenge bod going. Oh, yeah, I mean, different but, motivator, different motivator. But again, like you have to tap into that emotional yeah. mm-hmm. driver, mm-hmm. right? Because we're 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 human, and, and emotion is 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 important when making those sorts of decisions. Yeah. Well, it's like have a vision that pulls you. Right. Like she doesn't want to be lonely. So she has that vision that pulls her. (laughs) And we have to take that time. I like to do it quarterly. It's like, okay, is the vision that I set out for myself, is that still what I want today? Like, do I still want that? That's so important. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. And because people wait to do it just once a year. But I'm like, I'm doing it throughout the year because iterative short feedback loops. Yes. That's the, so you're checking in on yourself. Yeah. And that, that's a, that's a really important part. It's, it doesn't, it's, it's the practice, right? A process is, hi, I'm going to come sit down with you for 50 minutes and we're going to talk. There's going to be a little process there, right? A practice is, I'm going to, you're, you're doing the practice. You're having multiple guests. You're having, you're, you're, you're curating different shows and different topics and content. That's a practice. You're not going to stop doing that tomorrow. Right. So you have to make distinctions between those sorts of, and, and it's not um, checking back in. It has to be very specific. It can't be really indiscriminate. Yeah. Because we just, there's so many ways to go off. Okay. I like that. So you're confirming I'm on the right track. Yeah, I, I, I like it. Yes, the doctor. <laughs> I've got an A. I got an A on my report card. Okay, I want to talk to you too about where we hold stress in our bodies, mm-hmm. because, um, like for me, I, I I think the first time I came and saw you was for my back. Yes. The second time I came and saw you, I was breaking down in my jaw, in my jaw situation, and I 
as women, like, are there certain spots where we hold more stress than others? Well, because of the menstrual cycle, there's certain shifts throughout your cycle in estrogen, and estrogen changes ligament okay. laxity. Oh, so you do you do see changes in like joint stability just by the fact that you're a female. Um, I want to talk about the the hormones. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to. Yeah, tell me all about the hormones. Um, see, one of the biggest things I would say for for hormones is that you're going to get practitioners and, and especially in like conventional medicine say, well, I'm not going to test your hormones. They fluctuate all the time. So what's the point? Yeah, it is. You get the you have to check hormones and, and not just because you're struggling with infertility um, or because you have really bad cramps. I mean, if that's the case, you really should be looking into it. But you need to understand are your levels adequate? Because if they're not, you can find out why you can go further upstream. Mm -hmm. You can use tests like the Dutch and urine and, and cycle mapping tests to see if that's if, what I just did. If, if your rhythm cycle mapping, cycle mapping is, can be really good to kind of see it, it gives you 30 days. So yeah. it's not just a, a one snapshot because they do fluctuate. Right? right. But women also when you estrogen needs to be made, there's three types, estrone, estradiol and estriol. And you have to break that down and you want to push it down this protective metabolite pathway. And if you're not, you run into DNA damage and, and potential cancers. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. something that nobody talks about. Yet they have all of these fibroids and, um, and you know, it's cysts. It's so common. I talk to so many people who have PCOS and yeah, cysts. I'm like, this is not normal. Why are we? Why it's an inexpensive. The Dutch like test normal. is a three hundred dollar test. It's not like it's out of you know. Right. You can do it. You don't have to do it forever because once you've tested it, you get a pretty good profile as to like what your body's doing. Okay. It may change a little bit, but for the most part, it's kind of hard coded. And so, um, your hormones also they're they're reacting they're not just like causing a cycle they're 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 helping turnover in your gut they're changing um they're binding to to proteins in, in your bloodstream which is why like if you're not getting enough uh protein you'll see the liver and your stress the liver will produce something called sex hormone binding globulin it grabs all your hormones that your body worked so hard to create and used all utilized mm -hmm. all that energy and it makes it bio unavailable it, it, it inhibits it so now you're not even getting any of that anabolic drive mm -hmm. and that's where you start to see some of the like accelerated aging maybe fatigue so i'm i've become a believer after going back and looking at the women's health initiative that like bioidentical hormones can be can make or break you know just healthy activity if you've gone the natural route and that hasn't helped then you've got to go on to the next step but we are doing just a, a from the way we test it's a disservice yeah um and and women do have you know we all hold pain in, in certain areas like your cranial nerves the ones that are up in the brainstem, have some nerve supply to your upper trap and to your scm so when you're stressed there is some increased resting tone in those muscles. So that's why people always say, I hold all my stress in my oh, neck and yeah. my grandma. Okay. There's some science behind that, but a lot of people are also letting their heads fall off their necks. And that over no, time like, will create, that That will create, uh, that'll pull the curve out and make your muscles I think you did spasmic. tell me that, like when you're driving, like put your head I say down. I say the head escalator. Yeah. Imagine your head's like you floating on an escalator and just yeah. kind of coming up. It's just little, it's just, I mean, posture is not sexy. It's mundane as hell, but at least. You need to think about it more. You just when you reset, our body likes to have position. It doesn't like to hold static, prolonged postures. It doesn't feel normal. No, it doesn't because that's not your default. Right, right. It's not okay. your default. Okay. So I like talking about this hormone situation because Me most too. people, uh, they just kind of wait like until later on, like until there is a problem, like we said. So explain to me when you said try the natural route. If there, there's things like if you get tested or, or your doctor runs, so they some need to do the Dutch test. test. That's think, what you need to advocate for. I think that's a good. I mean, your doctors won't run. You got to find an integrative doctor. Okay. Um, that's gonna, that's gonna that's gonna run that test, um, and find somebody who isn't like running hair and mineral. Like there's just there's a lot of armchair experts. And people text me and DM me all the time, like, what do you think of this? And I'm like, please don't, please don't see another reel from this guy or this girl who like clearly has not spent 10 years practicing. So right. get referrals from people who have, who've got results okay. from, from their doctors. Like that's, that's really key. Okay. Don't, don't just because it's like, you've got 30 minutes to make this appointment, just go because somebody said this person's good and then be disappointed and have wasted all that time. Right. So de definitely you're going to want to run your hormones like a full hormone panel to see where you're at. Um, and there's ways that you can kind of modulate estrogen through supplements. There's ways you can bring up progesterone, exercise, uh, infrared sauna. There's, there's 
there's um, modalities that you can utilize that will help if you if you can stick to it for four to six weeks as you age isn't there one estrogen that like becomes dominant that's actually not good for you well as you as you get older estradiol will it's the most potent and it does peak after that you have something called like 4-oeh it's a metabolite um but you just you don't want to have you don't want progesterone and estrogen to grow discordant. Okay. And I see so many people with hysterectomies, maybe they left in the ovaries or they, or they did full hysterectomy. Now your adrenals are the sole makers of, your, of all hormones. So mm-hmm. you don't even get any of the sex hormones from your, from your ovaries anymore. So everybody really has a unique case and women are going on, on, on synthetic hormones on the pill super early for acne, for period cramps. That's what I got on birth cramps. control when I was like 11. And then you're wearing makeup. So you're, so you're putting, you're putting a lot of stress on the body in its reproductive years. And yeah, so it's not, good. it's not a surprise that like we're seeing, I, I didn't hear when I was growing up, I never heard of anyone with PCOS. I, right. I, it's, it's really on the, on the rise. Um, and so, but again, don't get, you got to still see the forest. You got to look at the other markers too. You have to run what I call functional blood chemistry analysis because okay. it's Write looking, down, it's, it's looking at your thyroid, full thyroid panel. And it's awesome when people come in and they're like, well, I already had the thyroid panel. You can see it's starting to catch on because people are, are not getting better. Just going through the motions, being put on medications, being told it's in their head, being told yeah. and it, it, there's a lot of gaslighting. Yes, there is. And there's just a lot of, uh, of, of poor care. And it's negligence, I, I think, because there's plenty of people that know how to, to guide people through those sorts of health markers and, and try to tr- and then treat it in a clinic, clinically meaningful way. It's really sad because like I remember going through nursing school and we had like one test out of all four years that I was in nursing school mm-hmm. that was on nutrition. Yeah. That was that's a new thing. Medical schools are just now adding nutrition to to their. And it's it's crazy because it's so much of this stuff could be fixed. First of all, like like you said in the beginning with your nutrition, like what are you eating? Uh, and then like for me, I found I, I've told you this before, like the low progesterone. Yeah. Right. Because I wasn't sleeping like I was. I had, was, I had straight up insomnia and like my normal doctor couldn't figure it out. And I was like, I read somewhere that I read in a friend's book actually that I had on mm-hmm. her she I had her on my show it's called is this normal and it was like low progesterone lack of sleep and I was like oh my gosh I need to get a hormone like panel checked so before there, I yeah. knew you yeah so it was crazy that like we just don't talk about these things and I was telling friends I'm I can't sleep like nobody knew how to help me mm-hmm. Well, what happens too? Because nobody really wants to dive in deep with you, right? They're like, oh, take CBD or how about some melatonin? Yeah. You get. I was trying everything. You get this yeah. like battery of recommendations, and mm-hmm. it, and they may or may not work. And again, are they band aids or are they, are Nothing they worked. are they getting to the root of the of of the issue? Yeah, and so I found low progesterone is cr- caused from chronic stress, like at this age. Yeah, it can. Yeah, and so I was like, okay, I had that's why I got the brain tap, and I've done all of these things to try to decrease the stress. And it's helped a lot, but plus I also got on progesterone. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, re- it's, really, it's really amazing. Anytime you can take, the body is full of little um, tricks that mm-hmm. if you stimulate it in a certain way, right? If you, provi- if you add a stress or if you remove stress to it, you will get a positive adaptation to it. It's just like, I can give people certain supplements, do some lifestyle medicine, you know, get them doing some weight lifting, some breathing, and you can get testosterone and re- remove foods that are inflammatory. And you can take testosterone from 350 to 800. Wow. Now, if they went, if they just go on TRT therapy, they have to be on it forever. It, they have to be on three drugs, one to make sure that their, that their own production doesn't stop. Another one to make sure that the excess testosterone doesn't get aromatized and turned into estrogen. So then they get gynecomastia. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? So it, it's, there's a lot. It's yeah. There's a lot to think about when 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 do, when dealing with that, which is why you have to, if you really want like true health, you're going to have to invest a little bit. Don't put a lot of don't put a burden of stress on yourself. Just no, I'm going to learn a little bit. It's not my area of expertise. Mm-hmm. Um, and and again, I just I think you have to. I I, I really want to participate in the dissolution of the current healthcare model. You can't take acute care and strap it onto chronic disease or like mystery illnesses. It just doesn't work. It's not, it's, they're not going to get to the bottom of it. Um, and you're going to spend a lot of time and money and get no answers Mm -hmm. and come out kind of jaded. Mm -hmm. So for everybody listening in right now, I think the message today is like invest in your health, 
for sure. Number one, invest in your health. Find out why you want to invest too. Like, like oh, yeah. do some do some introspection. Yes. Because if you just say everybody wants to invest in their health, right? But That's have true. you thought about it? So first, do some introspection. Yeah, create your vision <laughs> for why yes. it's important yes. for you to invest in your health. Then Beautiful. also like get your team of people. So if you have a doc, if you don't have somebody like Dr. Nick. Do you have like recommendations for people who are maybe in different, because we have people listening from all over the world. You can go on an IFM, the International Society of Functional Medicine, and you okay. can put in zip codes and you should find some pretty good practitioners, or at least it's a good starting point. Okay. Um, that, that would be a, re a really good starting point. And you said with your team, I think that's really important to get really freaking clear on your team because there's that story of this guy, he's, he's a fisherman and he's walking, he's got a barrel of crabs and a guy comes on and he goes, you better put a lid on those crabs. And he goes, and the fisherman's an old wise guy. He's like, nah, I don't need to. And he goes, anytime one of those crabs tries to get out of the bucket, the other ones reach up and pull them back down. And that is the, the nature, like the whole point is that once you get clear, once you break free of your conditioning and your programming, we're in a society that like doesn't like that. Yeah. So, so they start true. pulling you back down. So if you have people that are that are um, subversive or are adding to your self sabotage, yeah. then they shouldn't be part of your team. Amen. Sometimes it's hard to let those people go, but like they you, <laughs> that's that's a big one. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's so good. I was thinking about my friend who's she's getting sober right now and it's like you know, who she has on that team to like not pull her back down. Yeah. And, but it's anything like if you want to be healthy, if you want to have wealth, like you have to have those people who are going to be pulling you up and calling you forward into really like your true destiny. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We all, we all need some form of mentor or little bits of, of, you know, we have to, um, and, and, I, and I want to say, cause I'm not very good at celebrating. I get too serious sometimes. But somebody, it's very serious. somebody once told me, like, you got to wag the tail sometimes, yeah. too. You got to, like, yeah. you know, hang the Christmas lights, do the fun stuff. Don't don't just be like, it's health or, or Well, or because die. when you don't celebrate, you know, that's a scientific study that then your pleasure part yeah. of your brain starts to shrink. I told you, health, like, gratitude for me is something I'm, I'm really kind of doubling down on, being able to, like, truly feel grateful. Because it's that's just good. something that wasn't. You like, were just bypassing it. Yeah, it just didn't come natural to me. I was like, that's just my, like, there's standards and there's grace, right? So if you're somebody who's heavy on standards and not so much on grace, you're like, well, that's the way it should be anyway. And yeah. you never really, you never really just stop and smell the roses. That's you know? good. What are you grateful for right now? I'm, I'm grateful for this community that we have in South Orange County. I'm grateful for um, fantastic patience um, and the opportunity to continue to, to grow um, in this space. Oh, I think those awesome. are just some big ones. And my health, <laughs> for yeah. sure my health. Yeah. Okay, where can everybody find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Dr. Nick Deliberato DC or uh, my website's uh, www.spineandjointoc.com. Okay. And um, yeah, I'm always happy to do phone consults or answer questions and all that jazz. All right, we'll make sure to link everything up in the show notes. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. on. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yay. Yay. Well, I know we went over a little bit. What time is it? <laughs>